The future has changed so much over the last 50 years. It is a momentous occasion because we are stepping into a new era. First Nations people have been talking to us and we are listening to their voices because they have such a profound attachment to the earth. I think it's time. I think it's time we really start understanding that as we move forward, uh, we need to do so together. And we're going to be building a great future for our people. Well, here we are in the, the land of the Seychelles Nation, and we're approaching the White House right now, and you'll be the first MP that's ever been welcome to this house. This is where we do all the special events and uh, namings and cultural events. And I want to welcome you and I want to bring you into our longhouse. Well, thank you for the privilege. This is a true honor. Isn't it? Thank you. That's great. Thank you. <laughs> welcome to the second season of Voices of Shisha. I'm getting close. Perfect. All right, perfect. This is the chief show. He is the first uh, chief in Canadian history to host his own political talk show. And we'd like to do two things. Chief, I think it would be appropriate to welcome your guest, uh, Pam Goldsmith-Jones. And then we have a studio audience, so maybe both. Yep. Well, I'm very pleased and honored to welcome our new MP from the, the Canadian government. We're very pleased that the Liberals are successful in their and chosen by the Canadian people. Um, we're very, especially very happy that Pamela Goldsmith is honoring us here today with her presence and uh, she's here also to welcome the, the citizens and the community and to speak with uh, the citizens and to share with the citizens and the people of the Seashell Nation. So once again, I want to welcome Pamela Goldsmith-Jones. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. And thank you. So I have to do one more cultural event because it's tradition. And I just want to welcome all of you here today. It's tradition that when people and visitors come to honor us, I get to get up to welcome you. So welcome. <laughs> Pamela Goldsmith Jones. Mm -hmm. Chief uh, interviewed the Prime Minister before he was the Prime Minister. In that, uh, in that interview, he as much as anointed him, said, you're going to the top. Mm. At that time, I wouldn't bet there were many Canadians who thought it was possible. Such a young man, Stephen Harper, with such a omnipresent, uh, all the money in the world, and Mulcair, who was rolling along like a house on fire. Mm -hmm. In your impression, now, you jumped on at an early stage, which was very courageous, because it was early days. Mm -hmm. Did you, in your wildest imaginings, think that you'd pull this off to the degree that you have literally the kind of support in Western Canada you haven't had in years? Uh, not to the extent that we did, but you could see it building. And particularly for someone like me that, that, and the team that got involved so early on, it was lonely for a long time. Mm -hmm. I would even say up until the summer before the fall, that was when the NDP were polling very strongly, um, uh, but we saw things continuing to build and perhaps the general public didn't see it, but we were knocking on doors and making phone calls and finding that people were keeping an open mind and reserving judgment, unlike perhaps um, how that comes across in the media. Yeah. So we met, a lot, uh, we met with a lot of open minds. So Chief was the one who came to me about six, well, no, it was a month before the, the, the E-Day, and he said, Stephen's finished. And I asked him why, and he said, look at what's going on. He's plateaued out. He has gotten every conservative he's going to get, and people were strategically voting from NDP to Liberal. So I figured that the Prime Minister knew that the door was open at that time as well, and you could probably feel it. So what was your sense? I mean, the wildest ride ever. Uh, <laughs> I, you know, I think we felt, for our riding, we felt that we could be successful. I don't know that we felt it would translate into um, a majority government. That really started to pick up in the last few weeks. You're right about that. But, you know, we stayed very positive, and you see that reflected in the House of Commons today. The, the opposition still pound the desks, among other things, and we don't. We uh, applaud, 
and stay positive. And I think you're seeing that now being picked up in the city of Ottawa and right across the country. There's an awful lot of enthusiasm. So children can come to the hill now and not have to cover their ears <laughs> at question period. No, it's just we, we, the discipline that we are exhibiting today is the discipline of being positive, constructive, using words to describe what we may agree or disagree with properly. Yeah. Chief, you, you've got some things you would ask our new MP about ways in which she can facilitate the work and the vision you have for this nation. Yeah, we do. We, uh, first of all, I want to say that uh, when the, before the election, a year before the election, when, when Pamela showed her presence to the chief and the council, we, we seen a change, a change that was a huge shift in the way um, parties were going to approach. And when Pamela came into our community, she was very open. And that gained the, the confidence of not only the chief and council, but a lot of our young people were amazed that someone like Pam would be in the community just having a conversation about how life was for them and how life was in the community. So that created a, a huge change in the confidence amongst the whole community. And we're very happy that uh, the change in the government occurred. And as you know, the conversation I had with Justin uh, 12 months ago was one that where we needed to remind the Liberal government that this nation had a plan. This nation had a plan that we would be totally independent. And we've been preparing for that for 30 years. And because we, we fulfilled the promises that we would develop our people and develop our land, and I made it him aware that we were ready. We were primed and ready for that change. And because Pamela is such a great communicator, we're hoping that she's going to be able to help our council with the reconciliation that's happening in the TRC. And more than that, we need for her to communicate to the ministers that we need to meet with the ministers that are in charge of the environment, the land, and all the resources. Those are a mainstay because we were here and we were put here to protect the land and the resources. And we're doing that for the entire community. So we're asking Pam to make those events happen. We're asking Pam to be our communicator. We're asking Pam to fulfill those little obligations. And we would like to celebrate that with her one day and we're hoping that that day will come soon. Not many people realize the importance of a parliamentary secretary. Mm. Mm. So you are parliamentary secretary. It is uh, an encouragement. It is uh, really an anointing into the federal because you can wind up on back benches and never mm -hmm. be heard from again. We've seen that in this community. So tell us a bit about the parliamentary secretary, what it means and what part of the team it is. I know it's foreign affairs, but the role itself is quite strategic. It's really very interesting. There's a guidebook about what it is, but really you're there to support the minister. Um, parliamentary secretaries give up actually some of what an MP would have. So a parliamentary secretary cannot introduce a private member's bill, for instance, because of the position of privilege and responsibility that I have in my case with foreign affairs. So. On the floor of the House of Commons, the Parliamentary Secretary is there to debate the issues, to help organize uh, other MPs in that discussion, to cover for the Minister. In my case, the Minister, minister Dion will be away. So my first obligation is to the discussion in the House of Commons. There may be some travel involved, and um, I'd like to say at this point how grateful I am for the staff that we have hired, because in order to be able to be good <laughs> in the country or internationally, the most important thing is that we are serving the people in this constituency. Uh, and then I've been doing some national media as well, and I have to say thank you for this opportunity, particularly because you've included the entire community here. I, I really feel very strongly that the way in which we're going to walk down the road together and broaden the road for all people is by being together, not by having separate meetings and not by allowing misunderstandings or a vacuum to, you know, sort of be defined by, by others. We're in this together and um, 
I, that's really the fundamental underpinning of the truth and, truth and reconciliation process. <laughs> We're going to welcome uh, two of the counselors, one okay. a hereditary chief and former chief. Mm -hmm. Every chief, if you study the history, has a legacy. Uh, Gary Festchuk, led, he did remarkable things in getting people to build things and help. A real business type guy. And then this chief who has a vision which I'm going to ask him to articulate because it is widespread, it has begun, it involves using the resources we have and companies and, and reshifting the position of the nation in business deals. But the biggest part that he began just a very few days ago is a very unique healing of his people from residential school. And Chief, we'll close this segment if you'd be kind enough to reiterate some of the words you said at that time. Well, I think um, the, the most important factor that our people have carried over the last 200 years is the the effect that residential school had caused our people, the effect that the government at that time and the purpose of that government was to claim the land that we occupied. And those two things are very instrumental in terms of our people, the wellness of our people, the healing of our people has to happen. And I see that happening before anything else occurs. Only when my people are in, in the mode of wellness and in the mode of healing will they be able to move forward. And I see that as very critical for our people. And I'm happy that, um, that many groups in the community are participating, like the mental health people, the, the, the new hospital board, the school board. So all of them are going to assist in making that aware and making it easier for the children in the school system to learn and understand what their forefathers experienced. And when they understand that, then the real healing will happen for future generations. And that's what I'm endeavoring to do. The RCMP <clears throat> came to Beyond Genocide, the beginning of healing and reconciliation. Uh, and, and the staff sergeant spoke in front of the assembled group after hearing stories from people. And he said a couple of remarkable things. Would you like to explain what they were? Yeah, it was a very historical moment here last week when the police sergeant um, declared that they were going to be part of that healing, they're going to be part of that reconciliation. And I was amazed and I was really uh, proud that for the first time ever, an RCMP sergeant was able to declare that, that he was going to assist in the healing. In the past, our people experienced the RCMP taking them back and putting them back into residential schools. That was their main purpose. And their main purpose was to prevent our people to have a character, to have a presence in our land. So with the, the new thinking of the RCMP especially, it brings a whole new regime of assisting our people to heal, to reconciliate with the local community. And I think that is very historical. And the apology. Really, the apology for sure. RCMP apology for playing that role. Pamela Goldsmith-Jones, when we come back, you're going to meet two remarkable fellows, a hereditary chief and former chief, Gary Festchuk, who gave decades of service uh, to his community and his people, mm -hmm. as well loved. And the guy that I hold up as my own personal hero, Randy Joe. So that's when we return our Voices of Sea Shop. We'll uh, see you momentarily. <laughs> Voices of Shisha, starring Chief Cragen and his guest, Pamela Goldsmith-Jones. Plus, we've got Councillor Randy Joe. It's his first term, and he certainly made an impact. And, of course, the legendary Gary Festchuk, hereditary chief and former chief of this nation for decades. And I think it's, it's interesting. You, yes, indeed. Thank you, Gary. Pam, you made an interesting point that today we have a studio audience comprised of the community. And that really is where this nation seems to be headed. Embracing, you know, the walls are down, the welcome mat is out. And uh, part of that, I think you can play a pretty significant role ongoing. And Gary, you had some thoughts and things that you would like to be able to ask of Pam. 
Yes, I do. First of all, I want to welcome you into our home. Um, and also I also want to congratulate you on your election. I was actually following you around doing all of your platforms and in your candidate forums and, and then got to meet with you and actually shared uh, a relationship that I've never ever seen um, during the election. And there is something that I, because I, I did talk to you prior to the election and, and then after the election, um, I was one of the first people to have coffee with you. And one of the things I do want to ask, because it's very dear to our people here in Seashelt, and it's also very dear to the Kamloops people, who we have a certified class action now um, against Canada. And as we're going through this process, Canada's defense was all denial that any, nothing happened to our people in that residential school, including the day scholars. Sitting through that court process, and I couldn't believe some of the things that were being said. So my question to you, because I've been working very closely with you about having a meeting with the government now, with the minister. I know the minister agreed when I was in Ottawa, I, I went and represented our council in Ottawa before Christmas at the All Chiefs meeting. And I was really impressed of how our Attorney General, Minister of Justice and Minister of Indigenous Affairs, um, Caroline Bennett, took the time. Normally you get maybe 10 to 20 minutes with, with the minister. They spent three hours with the BC leadership getting to listen to what the leaders were talking about. And one of the things that I've asked is that, is there an opportunity? Because in our certification, there's an opportunity to take it out of the courts and, to, and go to a mediated settlement. But there's also an opportunity because it's, it falls into the TRC recommendations that no one will be left out. It's right in the recommendation. So my question to you is about being influential and getting us that meeting with the Liberal government so that we can sit down and give us the opportunity to see if we can resolve this through negotiation. Because too many of our people are dying now who didn't have the opportunity to see that, just, that justice that they're looking for, the healing that they needed from the residential school legacy, all those layers of a pain that they had to go through. Um, it has to come to an end now. And that's why I was so impressed when I heard the minister say that no one's gonna be left out. But we need that opportunity to sit with them at a table, it's similar how we've invited you into our home. So we're looking for that opportunity so we can have that, that day because in the end, no one's gonna be able to hide from the truth. We know what happened to our people in that school. So we're putting, we're putting, we wanna put an end to the saddest chapter in the history of our people. And I think with your help, um, we've sent letters to the Prime Minister, to the Attorney General, to, to Caroline, we CC'd you. To, to this date, we haven't had a response, but I'm really looking forward to see if we can have that meeting though. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for the welcome. And, uh, and thank you for all the meetings we've had so far. It's not just the saddest chapter in the history of your people, it's the saddest chapter in the history of all Canadians, in my view. And certainly from the leadership of our Prime Minister and throughout this government, truth and reconciliation and the things that can flow from that, if we do it properly, mm -hmm. uh, are, are hopeful and are our priorities. Um, I know that Minister Carolyn Bennett will meet with you and I, I, will, I will help facilitate that, of course. As you know, right now, and we've only sat as a government in the House of Commons for five days, so we're working as quickly as we can. Right now, she is traveling across the country to begin this uh, inquiry, mm -hmm. or uh, put the beginning pieces in place around the inquiry into murdered and missing Indigenous women and girls. And I think uh, we're going about that in the right way. It's private. It's with families. It's obviously very painful for people. And we want to be able to honor the families in the way in which the commission itself is structured. Mm -hmm. So it is a slow process. And that is what she is occupied with um, Im immediately. Uh, but you also see that our justice minister is uh, Jody Wilson-Raybould. And our fisheries minister is Hunter Tutu. And um, in the Western and Northern Caucus, which I sit on, which is Manitoba West and the North, there are more First Nations leaders now as MPs working on things, obviously, as equals. And so uh, I can commit 
to that meeting. Uh, in the mandate letter that uh, Minister Bennett has, it does talk about, you know, uh, working things out in a way that don't require litigation. That, that is draining uh, everybody's resources in more ways than one. And so uh, I, I can't, I'm not the minister, but absolutely we will get you that meeting with the minister. And I wouldn't mind coming with you for the beginning of it uh, as, your, as your representative, as well as the representative of everyone in our community. All right. That's a, a commitment. Randy Joe, I introduced him on the back end of the first segment by saying he was my hero. And I wasn't just flattering him. He is one of the most incredible comeback kids I've ever met in my life. And I've met a lot of people. He literally has become everything he wanted to be. And he has the respect of his family and his community. And now he's a sitting counselor. And it's his turn to ask a question. Uh, yes, uh, welcome, Pam, to our big house. And congratulations on your portfolio. Um, I want to ask a question about the um, housing situation in our, in our nation. Um, Prime Minister Trudeau was mentioning the infrastructure dollars that are coming uh, in the near future. Um, right now, our population is like 1,300 on the reserve, Seven, 670 living on the reserve. We probably have about 130 homes. Um, right now, um, we need 127 more homes right now. We have a very big shortage of homes and uh, we haven't received any dollars in the, in the last few years. And um, I was wondering if you can set us up with the right people in Ottawa to get a forum going so we can go over there and meet with somebody in Ottawa and uh, get something happening here. Um, we're trying to look at a structure for our people to build uh, like 120 new homes and we need the infrastructure money to get that started. Mm -hmm. It's very important. So Minister Sohi is of course responsible for the uh, increase in infrastructure investment that our government is prepared to make. For 2016, the existing Build Canada Fund that has been in place from the previous government will stay as we figure out what we are calling bilateral agreements between the federal government and each provincial government for the spending of money on public transportation, housing, and uh, wastewater and water initiatives. So we have time to figure out what that will look like. Uh, and then, of course, raise that in the, in the meeting with Minister Bennett because there's a special aspect of housing that, that pertains to First Nations communities. I'd also like to say, speaking of housing, that I was door knocking here on, on the reserve um, which is how I met Landon. Um, and I realized in speaking with an elder uh, woman, the candle was lit and, and I thought, oh, you know, something's happening. And I realized that I was door knocking when the community was observing a death in the family. And um, I apologized right away to Gary about that. I'm sorry about that. But I met Landon, who was keeping the fire going in the backyard, and we ended up talking for well over an hour because of his interest and the interest of some of your friends that were there in this election. And you know, that's so exciting that I know the fastest growing proportion of our population is Aboriginal people under the age of 25. And um, if Landon is any indication, the future is bright. And so I appreciate you taking the time with me on that day that I know was a day of sorrow. Tell me this, this is the last question we have in this particular segment, the writing is known as West Van House Sound. West Vancouver, Sunshine <clears throat> Coast, Sea to Sky Country. Because I know that here, they're, in the past, West Van is ruled because they got a greater population, they got more money, and they tend to be right of center when they're voting. How do we stop being the tail that the dog is wagging? Can you, can you uh, even that out a bit? Well, if you know me, you know that I think we are all one. Um, in our riding, the population is slightly, it's about 45% in West Vancouver. So the majority of this riding is outside of West Vancouver. Um, as I went around and around and around in one of Canada's largest ridings, I was struck by the commonality, truly. I mean, this is a, this is a geography that is mountains and ocean and coastline, 
people here universally care about the natural environment, about fish habitat, uh, arts and culture. People are here, they're so proud to live here. And that doesn't change, whether you're in Pemberton or Madeira Park or somewhere in West Vancouver. Also, I've made the decision for now to have one campaign, one, sorry, <laughs> constituency office in Horseshoe Bay intentionally so that for the coast, anybody could be a foot passenger, so that for people who live in the corridor, they can just zip off the highway easily. And so for people in West Vancouver, they move toward the center of our riding. And when you're standing in Horseshoe Bay, sort of, I guess, at the, at the entrance to Howe Sound, you really see what our riding is about. And so I'm working very hard to find the common ground among us because those are the things we'll be able to be successful on. Mm -hmm. And don't forget, we're not just in this to figure out what we can get for ourselves. We're here to contribute to Canada from the strength of our community. Well put. <laughs> Who can argue with that? When we come back, we're going to have a protocol ceremony, Chief, and uh, it will be conducted by Chief. And uh, when we do it, you want to hang on because this is an extraordinary opportunity. It's only happened once before to the woman you mentioned, Jody Wilson-Raybould. So stand by for that ceremony when we return. Welcome back to Voices of Chisha. Mm. Chief Cragen, uh, you have got a ceremony, a protocol uh, with the new MP that you'd like to uh, perform. It's part of your history, it's part of your culture. And maybe you could describe what's about to happen. Well, very seldom do we honor a member of parliament with the honor that we're about to have. And it's traditional in our people that because our people were generally a matriarch people, whereby the primary leaders were actually the female in, in the past. And because of that, we are going to honor Pam with a gift that is traditionally only given to matriarchs. So with that, I'm gonna ask uh, Landon to go and grab the gift. Oh my goodness. And, uh, oh my word. Bring it in and place it on the NPU's head. Do I stand? Yeah. Wow. Gee whiz, lucky you were by the fire that day. That's a sweet moment. Thank you. Wow, really, that is a very precious thing. <laughs> So I want to continue with that. Um, as you know, uh, Pamela mentioned that we do have two or three Aboriginal people uh, as members. And one of them was uh, Jody Raybon Wilson. And she was honored in, in North Vancouver with a similar hat. So we are going to be very happy and proud when she goes to Ottawa and she can sit down beside Jody and just compare. Do <laughs> 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 you like my <laughs> <laughs> well, this is, this, thank you, Landon. This is truly an honor. I know, I know the work that goes into this. Mm -hmm. I know the pride that, that women carry when they wear one. In fact, um, Chief Gibby Jacob and I did an event in West Vancouver years ago, and he had this on, and I felt like, well, there's, you just can't compete. It's, <laughs> it's, it's really quite something. I'd like to know a little bit about, more about when I can wear this. Is it, is it up to me, or is it something that is so special? It is, it is so special. So you will have to pick and choose mm -hmm. when the event is, when you feel it in your heart. If you're going to be able to stand with people like Jody, uh, the Prime Minister, um, we want you, if you're going to be on national TV, we want you to enter that chamber with this hat on so we can all cheer here with Sunshine Coast. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you. 
again, it, it gives me an awful lot to think about, which is ultimately what we are here doing. Words do matter, and um, matters of the heart matter. And uh, I believe that our government is truly dedicated to improving um, the souls of all of us because Canada's journey with regard to First Nations people has been so, so difficult. I brought a gift as well. You can use this anytime. <laughs> um, because I value the, uh, the tradition of exchanging gifts, what I would like to do is present this to you and your council. Um, I'd like you to, when you light it, think about the hope, um, the light that we all carry, and, and that the globe is all of us protecting that, that light together. And it's going to get, it's going to sometimes feel like the light's going out. Um, but maybe we can just remember this day and our commitment to one another. Thank you very much. It's, uh... I'll give you that. I just, I just want to say that it is enlightening and that does give us hope. And we will like this in the hope that the Liberal, Carb Liberal government will fulfill their obligations, fulfill their promise. And I want to also comment, one more comment on the hat. The hat is empowered with the red cedar. The red cedar has a lot of power in terms of giving your spirit uh, the power that it needs at the right time. And then when Pam feels that power that she's going to need, she'll put this hat on and she'll feel that power of the, not only the Seashell Nation, but the entire community. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> so that's our show, and uh, we're very pleased to have had you, Pamela Goldsmith Jones, uh, as a really important guest. I mean, this. It was an incredible election. I've, I've been around for a lot of elections, and that one was the most incredible freight train I've ever seen. And you're on it. And we're hoping we're, we're on it with on you. It. We're all yeah. on it. Um, Chief, as always, you're gracious. You're, you're man of light and heart, and uh, we'll do this show again. We're inviting you back because as you grow, as you say, the five days on the hill, mm -hmm. as you grow, uh, you're welcome back to this show anytime you come. Okay. Thank you very much. And thank you. Thank you, studio audience. And we'll see you again soon on Voices in Seashell. Good day. <laughs> thank you. The future has changed so much over the last 50 years. It is a momentous occasion because we are stepping into a new era. First Nations people have been talking to us and we are listening to their voices because they have such a profound attachment to the earth. I think it's time. I think it's time we really start understanding that as we move forward, uh, we need to do so together. And we're going to be building a great future for our people.